It was just she was receiving all the accolades, the praise for everything that was happening in the WNBA, and she hadn't even played a game yet. Wait a minute. Martin looking. Here's Clark. She fires. And it goes! Okay, cool. now we just have to have people because of marketing and their attention, and they're not as talented. And we're not. ESPN got completely embarrassed by Caitlin Clark, and they only have themselves to blame. Caitlin, who usually stays calm and avoids drama, finally spoke out. Kelly almost got to steal. How about Clark? Oh, she is so smooth. You've probably never seen her criticize her critics, whether it's Angel Reese, Cheryl Swoops, or anyone else. But this time, she made it clear she's been paying attention to everything said about her. She might not always reply, but she's definitely listening. And guess what? Some top experts in the game are supporting her, making this even more satisfying. I, I'm disappointed in you, and, and, and Molly, I'm disappointed in you. I'm just, uh, because women, this first What happened? We, 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 the, the, the kind of heat that me and Shannon have had to take. Molly, what's up? As for ESPN, especially Molly Karam, the backlash they're facing right now is something they'll be dealing with for a long time, probably even for the next seven generations, to be honest. Really, Molly? Wow! This embarrassment is going to hit ESPN hard. They might need to take a step back for a while. Why? Because ESPN isn't just another sports channel. It's a major sports powerhouse. Their influence stretches across the NBA, NFL, WNBA, and more. For years, ESPN has been the go-to for sports highlights, breaking news, and expert analysis, earning their status as the top force in sports media. But with all powerhouses, there are cracks in the facade. Beneath the flashy graphics and exclusive interviews, there's a side of ESPN that people have been questioning. Hidden biases, selective reporting, and subtle favoritism, especially concerning someone like Caitlin Clark. She couldn't play. ESPN isn't just a faceless corporation pumping out sports content. It's made up of personalities who shape how we view athletes. You've got regulars who show up daily with their hot takes and guest analysts who drop in with their opinions and then leave. Together, they create the narrative that influences public opinion. But here's where it gets problematic. Some of these personalities take their roles too far. Instead of offering fair analysis, they seem to hold personal grudges against certain athletes. And when it comes to Caitlin Clark, let's just say the coverage hasn't been kind. Shannon, what are you saying? People didn't Don't think do that, that Caitlin Clark was talented? Be what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that a lot of you came up here and because Caitlin Clark was getting shine, you guys were saying, don't give Caitlin Clark shine because there were women that was by her forehorn that don't get shine. Caitlin Clark isn't just any player. She's breaking records and making a huge impact. But if you're relying on ESPN for that info, you might be let down. Instead of giving her the credit she deserves, some hosts seem to take too much pleasure in criticizing her. It's like they can't handle that she's making waves, so instead of celebrating her success, they're busy throwing shade. It's pretty obvious now. They act like her achievements are a fluke or not deserved, and they downplay her influence on the game. It was just she was receiving all the accolades, the praise for everything that was happening in the WNBA, and she hadn't even played a game yet. So people were just saying, respect who did it before, respect the other stars. What makes this even more frustrating is the double standard. Other athletes in similar positions get treated like royalty. Excuses are made, praises are sung, and they get the full support. But when Caitlin Clark achieves something remarkable, the tone shifts completely. It's as if they have a personal issue with her. These critics use their influence to twist the narrative. And guess who ends up on the losing end? Caitlin Clark. Instead of giving her the recognition she deserves, they go for low blows, passive-aggressive comments, and snide remarks, making their bias painfully clear. And of course, leading the charge is Molly Karam herself. Molly's role at ESPN has always been one of authority. Hey, it wasn't that anybody discussion. didn't think she was going to be successful or not play. It was just that we felt the other players in the W deserve shine as well. Molly Karam is usually known for making bold statements, but her comments about Caitlin Clark have crossed a line and landed her in controversial territory. It all started when Molly suggested in a heated debate in 2024 that Caitlin's success was merely a stroke of luck due to other players' injuries.
Yes, you heard that right. According to Molly, Caitlyn's rise to the top wasn't due to her incredible talent or record-breaking performances, but just dumb luck. Naturally, this didn't sit well with anyone who has any sense of fairness. The internet exploded with fans and analysts rushing to defend Caitlyn, faster than you can say bias. The idea that Clark's rise is somehow linked to someone else's misfortune is a major insult, like telling the fastest runner they only won because someone else tripped. The backlash was swift and intense, spreading faster than a viral tweet. This wasn't just a one-off slip from Molly. Respect the other stars like the Asia Wilsons. We're also seeing Angel Reese and others like that bringing attention to the league. So it wasn't that anybody was was knocking her or denying it, but also now she now she's backed it up. So as far as the Olympic spot, I got when this. it was just based purely on marketing and garnering attention, we thought that was undermining the integrity of the game. One of the most unbelievable things Molly said was that having Caitlin Clark on Team USA would actually hurt the game. Think about it. Here's an athlete who's breaking records, drawing millions of fans, and almost single-handedly boosting the WNBA, and Molly believes her presence would somehow be harmful to the sport. At this point, you have to question if Molly is just making these statements for shock value, because it's hard to believe anyone genuinely thinks that. Diana Taurasi knows how to get Brittany Griner the ball on the inside more than anyone else on the team does. Like, there's no way as a professional athlete you can sit here and completely discount what team chemistry and player no. chemistry stands for. As things were heating up, Stephen A. Smith stepped in like a hero straight out of a sports drama. Famous for his no-holds-barred opinions, Stephen A. wasn't throwing shade at anyone. Instead, he was dropping hard truths to support Caitlin Clark. I, I'm disappointed in you and, and, and Molly. I'm disappointed in you. I'm just uh, because we've been this first. What happened? We, 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 the, the, the kind of heat. In a career defined by bold statements, Stephen A. delivered a clear and impactful moment. He wasn't merely defending Caitlin Clark. He was exposing ESPN's hypocrisy in one fell swoop. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more dramatic, along came Pat McAfee, the lively force of ESPN. The goat. Is she what? I don't know. Oh, I just, with my eyes, I couldn't see if she's Caucasian. During a live discussion about Caitlin Clark's impressive performance, Pat McAfee referred to her as a white player on ESPN. For a network that prides itself on top-notch sports journalism, this mistake didn't just cross the line, it ignited the rulebook. Instead, we have to hear people say that we only like her because she's white. And she's the only popular because the rest of the rookie class is doing what they're doing. The answer is simple. ESPN is dealing with serious internal issues. McAfee's comment wasn't just a slip of the tongue. It highlighted a deeper problem within the network. This wasn't the first time ESPN has faced accusations of bias or mistreatment of athletes. But this incident marked a new low. It's a bunch of bullshit, and we think the WNBA, more specifically, their refs need to stop trying to screw her over at every single turn. Even with the flood of criticism, ESPN's executives stayed eerily quiet. They promised to look into the situation, but no real actions were taken. McAfee returned to his role just days later, as if the controversy had never occurred. It was a clear slap in the face to those demanding real accountability. Be patient with herself and with her team. And, you know, and, and that's not a virtue of Caitlin's, uh, you know. Instead of taking action against McAfee, they essentially gave him a free pass. That made it clear where the network's true priorities lay. Caitlin, um, you liked a, an Instagram post last mm -hmm. night uh, from Taylor Swift that got a lot of attention. And I'm just curious if you could tell us what that post meant mm -hmm. to you. And if you are, in fact, potentially going to endorse Kamala Harris. Thank you. I think for myself is, you know, I have this amazing platform. So I think the biggest thing would be just encourage people to register to vote. I think for myself, this is the second time I can vote in an election. At age 22, I could vote when I was 18. So um, I think do that. That's the biggest thing I can do with the platform that I have. And that's the same thing Taylor did. And I think continue to educate yourself with the candidates that we have, the policies that they're supporting. I think that's the biggest thing you can do. And that's what I would recommend to every single person that has that opportunity in our country. Something I found interesting, Patrick Mahomes and Caitlin Clark yesterday 
uh, were both uh, asked about Donald Trump, politics, Kamala Harris, voting, and I think they both gave appropriate, interesting reactions. We'll start with Patrick Mahomes because he's been in the news cycle because of his wife as it relates to politics. She's like some Trump tweets. Obviously, Taylor Swift is on the other side. She's a Kamala supporter. Stephen A. introduces the key point. Mahomes and Clark both faced political questions, and their responses were measured, staying away from controversial endorsements. Stephen's framing sets up the context for how athletes navigate the tricky world of political expectations. I think I've, I've always said, um, I don't want my place and my platform to be used to endorse a candidate or do whatever um, each either way. I think my place is to inform people to get registered to vote, is to inform people to do their own research and then make their best decision for them and their family. Um, and so I think that's every time I'm on this stage and I get asked these questions, I'm going to refer back to that because I think that's what makes America so great. I think it was important, though. I don't know if important is the right word, but when you were at the U.S. Open this past mm -hmm. weekend and you guys were there with Taylor and Travis, is, is that an important image to to show that people who may have different philosophies? Yeah, I mean, I think I've always, uh, even dating back, I think if you've seen my history, I, I've grown up with people from every every aspect of life um, and every background. And I think the best thing about a football locker room and kind of how I've grown up in baseball locker rooms, everything about that is people can come together and, and achieve something and achieve a, a common goal. Um, I think if we can, we, we talked about it a, a while back, but I think if we can do that as a nation, I think that we can get the best out of each other. And so I think that's something that I do every single day. And whenever I'm hanging out with, with whoever, I'm not, I'm not thinking about their political views or anything like that. I'm thinking about the people and how they, how they treat other people. Um, and I was with a lot of great people this weekend. Specifically about the idea of President Trump bringing up Brittany's name, does that affect you one way or another? No, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's about, it's about me and my family and how we um, treat other people. Um, and, I, and I think you see is that Brittany does a lot in the community. I do a lot of commu in the community to help bring people up and give people other opportunities to, to use their voice. Um, and so it's um, in the political times, people are going to use stuff here and there. And I can't let that affect how I go about my business every single day and live my life um, and try to live it to the best of my ability. Like Mahomes, Caitlin Clark stays neutral, focusing on the importance of voting. Stephen A. acknowledges her youth and the scrutiny she faces, but points out that she's following the same thoughtful approach as Mahomes, using her platform to inspire civic engagement without taking sides. For the Democratic Party, that's the way I look at it. Look, just my opinion, you can agree or disagree. If she had it to do it all over again, I don't think Caitlin would have liked that tweet. She just would have said, you know what, I want to stay out of it. I think this has been more trouble than it's been worth for her this week, given... Jason Whitlock adds that Caitlyn, being a rising star, faces extra pressure when engaging in anything political. His comment reflects the dilemma many athletes face, balancing their personal views with the public's expectations. A couple nights ago, we saw the debates take place. First debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Right after the debate, Taylor Swift hops on social media endorsing Kamala Harris as her choice for president. And immediately it went wild. Um, Charlie kicks off by highlighting the significant moment when Taylor Swift used her massive platform to endorse Kamala Harris right after the debate. The endorsement immediately drew attention, reflecting Swift's unparalleled influence in both entertainment and politics. It's a clear example of how celebrity endorsements can impact the public conversation during election seasons. Yeah. Let's see how many, how many, um, she has over 10 million likes at this point in time on her endorsement of Kamala Harris on Instagram. That's crazy. Over 10 million in a little over a day. That's wild. The, the Taylor Swift has is absolutely incredible. But shortly after Taylor Swift put up this post, we were seeing all different types of people start putting in their own, you know, support of Taylor Swift support of Kamala Harris. Um, for example, we, we would definitely expect Travis Kelsey to support his girlfriend, obviously, but some of his inner circle, 
Charlie emphasizes the viral nature of Swift's post, reaching over 10 million likes in just a day. This immense engagement demonstrates Swift's cultural power. Charlie also brings up Caitlin Clark, noting that her simple act of liking the post sparked interest and speculation about her political leanings. This is where social media becomes a stage for unintended political statements, especially for public figures. A lot of people had no idea how Caitlin Clark identifies politically. Is she Republican? Is she Democrat? Is she stay out of politics? Maybe she doesn't even vote. Who knows? So a lot of people are quick to assume, okay, because she liked this post, she is a liberal. She probably also will be voting for Kamala Harris. Charlie humorously points out the quick assumptions people make about Caitlin Clark's political identity after she liked Swift's post. She questions the logic behind equating a like with full political endorsement, mocking the tendency of the public to jump to conclusions. This segment underscores how even minor social media actions by celebrities or athletes can fuel widespread speculation. Well, Taylor Swift is now in her endorsement era, throwing her support for Vice President Harris just minutes after last night's debate wrapped up. Now, the Berks County native sharing this picture here, calling herself a, quote, childless cat lady and also writing, quote, I believe we can accomplish so much more in this country if we are led by calm and not chaos. And she went on to say in her statement, Swift pointed out a number of issues that matter to her most, including reproductive and Natasha in introduces Taylor Swift's public endorsement of Kamala Harris, framing it as part of Swift's endorsement era. This move was a direct response to the debate, emphasizing her focus on calm leadership and progressive issues like reproductive and LGBTQ plus rights. Also, Swift, according to her statement, said her call to action was also motivated in part by her fears surrounding AI right now. And those fears, she says, were realized when a former President Trump posted fake images of her falsely endorsing him. Experts say this happens more than you might think. I'm not surprised that AI images have been used to spread these phony uh, celebrity endorsements. Natasha discusses Taylor Swift's concerns about AI-generated misinformation, particularly referencing the fake Trump endorsement. This highlights the increasing risk of AI being used to spread false information, especially involving high-profile figures like Swift. What's the danger in this, and are you seeing this happening more and more? The News Literacy Project created a misinformation dashboard. Uh, we've pretty much been collecting every single election-related claim that we could find. Um, and there's been a huge number of fake celebrity endorsements, almost 10% in the dashboard relate to an endorsement or a celebrity. She addresses the growing prevalence of fake celebrity endorsements tied to elections with AI playing a significant role. The misinformation dashboard reveals that a substantial portion of election-related falsehoods involve celebrities, showing the deep impact of AI on public discourse. Could you stop, please? What the hell you mean nobody thought that you could make it to the league? Who are these people? You a first round pick. You won a national championship at LSU. Okay? You went deep into the postseason NCAA tournament your last year there. Stephen A. Smith. Find motivation in proving people wrong. They should also acknowledge the support they have. What a year. I never would have imagined the last bucket of my rookie season would be a three but maybe that was God saying, give them a taste of what they'll be seeing more of in year two. Laugh out loud. Through it all, I've showed that I belong in this league even when no one else believed. All I have ever wanted was to come into the W and make an impact. I can confidently say I have done that and will strive to keep doing so. I'm filled with emotions right now that I have a season in injury, but also filled with so much gratitude for what is next. Although this is God's timing and not mine. I'm finally able to give myself a physical and mental break. Angel Reese's tweet, read by Stephen A. Smith. Commentary after Angel Reese's post. But again, Reese mentions that no one else believed. While it's understandable that an athlete might feel isolated in tough moments, Stephen A. has a point. Reese was celebrated from day one. Perhaps she's referring to a more personal journey, but in the public eye, her success was expected. The way she frames this as a stepping stone toward an even brighter future is admirable, though. Her drive and confidence are going to take her far when she returns to the court. 
It's obviously definitely sad anytime you see anybody go down with an injury, especially people that you came into this league with, whether it was Cam Brink, whether it was Angel, and especially Angel. You want to see her finish out this year. Obviously, she's had a historic year, and she's done some incredible things. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark's reaction shows the deep respect between these rookies, even after fierce competition in college. Her empathy shines through as she talks about the heartbreak of seeing a peer like Angel Reese sidelined. Clark acknowledges the incredible year Reese had, highlighting that Reese's presence was impactful not just for her team, but for the entire league. This moment reflects the camaraderie among top athletes, where despite being rivals on the court, they root for each other's success. Clark's reaction emphasizes that beyond competition, there's a shared understanding of the physical and mental toll that injuries bring. And in Reese's case, her return is highly anticipated not just by fans, but by her fellow players. Angel Reese has to get the nod. Now, I know it's not a popular, popular uh, position to take because Angel Reese has to do the dirty work. It's right above and them. And the sky right now are in the playoffs. So you'd have to give the nod in my mind to Angel Reese. Look, Caitlin Clark, the 22-year-old rookie for the Indiana Fever, is playing like an MVP, but the haters won't stop. Even with her incredible performances, some people still refuse to give her credit. But Shannon Sharp is speaking up. The NFL legend just delivered a powerful message aimed at those doubting Clark's skills. He's calling out ESPN analysts who have been tearing her down, especially the ones who didn't choose her for WNBA Rookie of the Year. There's a, but there's a lot of women that was on ESPN that had a lot to say earlier about this. I had they gone quiet now. You say they quiet? Y'all quiet now? Now I want somebody to send that to you because you know who I'm talking about. I ain't gonna call your name, but you know who y'all. Y'all had a lot to say early. Y'all had a lot to say early. And if you think I'm talking to you, I am. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. I'm talking to you. You know who you are. One of your were former coach. Though Sharp didn't mention anyone directly, it was obvious who he meant. His remarks seemed aimed at ESPN analyst and former coach Carolyn Peck, who went viral in July for picking Angel Reese over Caitlin Clark for Rookie of the Year. Peck even praised Reese for posting grown woman numbers, subtly suggesting that Clark didn't stack up. A big question. If you had to log your vote today, who would your rookie of the year be in the WNBA? Really tight. But when you look at where the teams are, and I also went a little deeper and I looked at plus minus, and I also look at net rating. And when you look at that, Angel Reese has to get the nod. Angel Reese has to do the dirty work. I have said it's not sexy to have to battle and rebound inside and where you've got to do the blue collar work. But this is a player that has come in as a rookie and is putting up grown woman numbers. But Sharp didn't hold back. He dropped another bomb, this time calling out Monica McNutt, a former college basketball star and ESPN analyst. McNutt also sided with Angel Reese over Caitlin Clark, using the Chicago Sky's stronger record as her defense. I have said this all season, BC. My rookie of the year is going to go based on the standing. Above and them. the Sky right now are in the playoffs, so you'd have to give the nod in my mind to Angel Reese. Look, 12 double-doubles to start uh, is the record that spanned over two seasons. She's already gotten to 11. Sharp wasn't having it. While WNBA legend Lisa Leslie has tried to strike a balance, suggesting that both Clark and Reese deserve recognition, the numbers tell a different story. Clark is far ahead in both stats and impact, with Reese averaging 13.3 points and 13.1 rebounds per game. Efficiency has been a struggle, especially with her team losing six games in a row. Leslie's attempt to favor Reese over Clark doesn't hold up, especially after their latest head-to-head -head clash. In their most recent showdown, the Indiana Fever demolished the Chicago Sky 100-81, taking the season series 3-1. Clark was unstoppable, finishing with a season-high 31 points and 12 assists, while Reese managed just 10 points and 11 rebounds in a night she'd rather forget. This season, Clark has been nothing short of extraordinary. She's averaging 18.7 points, 5.6 rebounds, and 8.4 assists per game shooting 42.4% from the field and 34.1% from beyond the arc. Since the Olympic break, she's taken her game to another level, leading the Fever to a 6-1 record while putting up 24.6 points, 5.0 rebounds, and 9.0 assists per game. 
Clark isn't just in the Rookie of the Year conversation, she's in the MVP conversation too, and for those who doubted her, it's time to face the facts. Caitlin Clark is the real deal. After utterly dominating Angel Reese in the Chicago sky with 31 points and 12 assists, Clark and the Indiana Fever faced a crucial test against the Dallas Wings. This game was more than just another matchup. It was a chance for the Fever to climb above the .500 mark for the first time this season. And as usual, Clark did not disappoint. From the opening tip-off, Clark was a force of nature. She put on absolute masterclass, scoring 28 points and dishing out 12 assists, leading the Fever to a 100-91 victory over the Wings. This performance was so incredible that Clark made WNBA history again. As noted by Stat Mamba, she became the first rookie in either the WNBA or NBA to record 25-plus points, 10-plus assists, and 5-plus three-pointers in consecutive games. She's breaking records that have stood for decades. Her coach sides in this team. Clark, come back and answer. Up ahead, Clark, beautiful pass to Mitchell. You talked about it at the open. Weak side. A oh, great play, and it ends up in Caitlin Clark. Get but Caitlin Clark wasn't just about making history. She's about changing the game. With this latest performance, Clark became the first rookie in WNBA history to reach 600 points and 250 assists in a single season. She's now just the eighth rookie ever to score over 600 points, joining an elite club of players in a league that's seen over 1,000 rookies. And if that wasn't enough... Clark now holds the record for the most double-doubles by a guard in a single WNBA season. She's not just a rookie. What Caitlin Clark has done for the game is, is generational. And I just, as a, as a baller to a baller, I just want to say thank you to you, Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. For just lifting our game up, you and so many great players. But what you're doing, you're going to make all these women multimillionaires one day. Satu Sabaley summed it up perfectly when she joked that while it's great to see more fans in the stands, it's a little less fun when so many of them are cheering for the fever. Obviously, it's annoying because um, there were way too many Caitlin fans. And I <laughs> um, but like it just kudos because yeah. it's amazing to see so many people in women's basketball jerseys. It's amazing to see the excitement and the the joy that comes out of that. So although I feel like our Dallas fans could have done better, I I had mixed feelings obviously seeing all the Caitlyn jerseys <laughs> in our home, but it's it's an amazing sign for women's basketball. The Fever have set a Gun BA attendance record with over 500,000 fans for their 33 games, and the entire league's attendance is up nearly 20% this year, and much of that surge in popularity can be attributed to Clark's electrifying performances. She's not just a rookie sensation, she's a league-altering talent who's drawing in fans from all over the country. So much support for Caitlin Clark. Uh, cause she's the best. Uh, she lets things roll off of her. She's just an all around great player. And the Lego threes. With all the records she's broken and the impact she's had on Fever's success this season, it's clear that we're beyond the point of discussing Caitlin Clark as just a rookie. She's already one of the best players in the WNBA period. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with Shannon Sharp calling out ESPN for their criticism of Clark? Or do you think Angel Reese still deserves the spotlight? Let's get a conversation started. Fever's Caitlin Clark breaks WNBA rookie record for assists. Add yet another milestone to Caitlin Clark's record-breaking 2024, her latest coming Sunday in the Indiana Fever's 92-75 win over the Seattle Storm as she broke the WNBA single-season rookie mark for assists. Clark, who leads the WNBA in assists at 8.3 per game, had nine Sunday to reach 232, passing Ticha Penichero's previous rookie record of 224 set in 1998. Penichero was the number two pick that year for the Sacramento Monarchs, who are no longer in the WNBA. She helped lead the Monarchs to the 2005 League Championship and finished her career with 20,600 assists third most in WNBA history. Clark was four years from being born when Penichero came into the WNBA and was 10 years old when Penichero retired, but Clark said the two connected during her college career at Iowa, and she knows enough to accurately describe Penichero, who is regarded as one of the most creative and exciting passers in women's basketball history.